Hey guys, I'm Rick and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Where today we're going to be wrapping up our best under 30 series for our CPU cooler side. And we're basically going to go over all the models that we, that we looked at so far and pick out our best. So if you're building a current gaming system, whether you're on Intel or Ryzen, what are the best CPUs you can choose if your budget is under $30 for that component? Now, before we get to the exact video, there's a couple of things I want to clear up. Just in general, for all temperature comparison videos out there, because there's a couple of questions that came up in my previous videos that I want to explain to you guys. Number one, when we're looking at charts and temperatures, we're not looking for absolute values. What that means is that if on my system I got a 29 delta temperature, it doesn't mean that on your system you're going to be getting the exact same thing. No two setups and no two CPUs are the same. What's important, however, is if one cooler performed better than the other on my system, theoretically, they should perform better on your system. Therefore, you can make, come to the conclusion of what is the best choice if you're focusing on this budget. Number two is that uh, basically also it's important to note that temperature differences are not linear. We're not going to go into a whole uh, thermal dynamics class today or anything like that, but it's just to know that if these two coolers have a three degree difference on my CPU, which generally on my test system is between 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, it doesn't mean that on your system there couldn't be a five degree difference because as temperatures go up, the division between the two CPUs, if there's a performance difference, will get wider and wider. That's just something that is normal for all thermal dynamics. So it's important to note that we're not looking for absolute values. We're really trying to compare the coolers one to another to see which are the best choices. Now that that's out of the way, we're going to get to the methodology really quick. So how do I do these tests? As in all my videos, I test on my Ryzen 3 1200 test bench system. So it's an open air test bench. The CPU is overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz and I'm using 1.3 volts to hit that overclock. And basically for the noise tests, I use a portable sound meter placed about one and a half foot away from the fan on the cooler. And the cooler is locked at 100% for the fan for all tests, whether it's temperature or sound in these tests, the fan is locked at 100. So you're really getting the maximum performance all these coolers can give you on a system. So methodology, all that's out of the way. We're going to take a quick overview of the coolers we have on uh, that we looked at so far. And if you guys want any detailed information on any of the coolers, because we're not going to go into very big details today, I have a review on each individual cooler on my channel. So I invite you to look up my other videos and you can find exact reviews on each one of these coolers one by one if there's a couple that really interest you and you want some more information, like seeing what comes in the box, uh, seeing exactly, you know, um, the what the recommendations are, are there any special things that you should know about the cooler or whatnot. So without further ado, we're going to go really quickly over what we have. So we're going to go by manufacturer. Number one, we compared the stock coolers from AMD. So the new stock coolers. By the way, if any of you guys never saw it, this is what the old stock coolers used to look like from the old FX series and before. So AMD's made a huge step up with their new stock coolers. And I've got to give it to them. It was really time that a manufacturer actually started giving decent stock coolers with their stuff. We won't need this because we actually didn't compare it. So getting back, Ryzen. So whether you have the more entry level models of the Ryzen system, you're going to have the Ryzen Stealth Cooler. And if you're going to have the higher models, you're going to have the Ryzen Spire Cooler. So basically, uh, the reason we're going over them quick is so that when you look at the charts, we have to abbreviate the names, obviously. You guys should be able to follow around, find the cooler you're looking at. Feel free to pause the video on the charts if they don't stay up there long enough so that you have time to spot out the coolers you wanted to see. Uh, for So for AMD, those are the two stock coolers. Obviously, I wanted to compare these coolers, see if they at least perform better than the new stock. Cooler Master. We have the Hyper T2, the entry level and the Hyper 212 Evo, which is the most common cooler almost for overclocking and for years has been the go-to solution for budget systems generally. We're gonna stack up and see if it's still the king of the hill as it was a few years back. 
After that, here we have Deepcool. Now, Deepcool owns a big share of the market under 20, under 30 bucks. And uh, it starts all the way from the um, Iceblade 100, which is about a $10 cooler. You have the Ice Edge Mini, which is about a $12 cooler. Then we have the Gamax series, which is the 200 at the bottom, $15. The Gamax 300 at about 20 bucks. And the Gamax 400 at about $30. So you'll see them abbreviated as DC100, DC200, DC for deep cool, and whatnot. So they are the biggest manufacturer under $30. They're the ones that have the most current models. After that, we have a thermal take coming in with their Contact Silent 12, which is uh, a, one of the first coolers to come out for the, that was specifically geared towards more of the AM4 platform for Ryzen. After that, we have the, from Be Quiet, we have the Pure Rock Slim, which is their 92 millimeter fan model, rated for 120 watts TDP if you're trying to find it. From Cryo Rig, we have the, a, uh, the M9, this is the A version since my uh, test bed is a AMD system, but it is exactly the same except for the mounting me mechanism. You have the M9i for Intel. And lastly, we have the Ragen Tech which is the Rigentec Eidos, which is a manufacturer that is not too much, that well known in North America, but is very well known in Asia and Europe. And well, there's a couple of specificities about this cooler. So if you are interested in it, please watch my review on this cooler before, because we're not gonna go into these details in the video, but there's a couple of important things you need to know about this cooler before buying it. So there we go. Now we're gonna get to the important stuff. Let's go look at the charts. So we're gonna start with the temperature charts and I'm gonna to have to follow along here because there's a lot of information here. So if we look at the temperature charts, which should be up on the screen right now, first thing I wanna clear up on this charts as well as we're looking at them, as uh, the thermal take contact 12 is actually there twice on the chart. Once, once as the TT12 and once as the TTLNC because the contact 12 actually comes with what's called a low noise uh, cable, which allows you to lower the RPMs on the fan, uh, on the cooler, and actually get a lot more silent performance out of the cooler. So we compared the performance with and without that cable installed. So if we look at the temperatures, the numbers speak for itself. The best cooler overall was the Deep Cool 400, followed by the Cooler Master Hyper 212, then close behind was the Thermal Take 12 without the LNC, the Rigen Tech IDOS, and finally the Thermal Take with the LNC. The rest of the chart we're gonna, not going to name, you can take a look at it, but we're going to really target out those five top coolers for the moment, because what we're looking at today is what are the best buys you can make. So, if we look at temperatures, we already know that the big top five are the are the basically more expensive coolers, which are the $30 coolers. So the Contact 12, the Gamax D400, the Cooler Master 212, so it's keeping up performance wise, and the Rigentech IDOS. Now, however, second factor that we always look at in the videos is noise performance. Because if you're getting a great performance, but it sounds like a leaf blower, it's not gonna be much use to you or at least it's not gonna be very pleasant. So let's go look at the noise numbers now. So if we look at the noise, best overall was the thermal take with the LNC installed, and it was actually the biggest margin as you can see on our charts at 37 decibels. So with the LNC installed, this thing is really dead silent. And as we saw in the previous chart, even with the LNC installed, it was still in the top five coolers. After that, at 42 decibels, we have three coolers that are tied. Now, uh, if you look in the charts, I didn't highlight the stock coolers from AMD, uh, simply because what we're trying to see is which are the best aftermarket coolers today. The AMD stock coolers are more there, like I said, for comparison sakes, but it's still nice to know that they have pretty decent performance overall because they're all, they're all at the beginning of the chart. So then we have the uh, Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim, followed by the Cryorig M9 at 42 decibels, and the AMD Spire Cooler, which is the one that comes with the higher-end models. 
And then in the uh, fourth place as a aftermarket cooler, we have the uh, Thermaltake uh, Contact 12 without the LNC installed. And in fifth place, we have the Deepcool 400. After that, the rest of the chart is self-explanatory. One thing I'm gonna say before we close the chart is unfortunately, as you can see, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo is the almost the, mo the loudest cooler on the chart at 52 decibels. It's actually only beaten out by the Cooler Master Hyper T2, unfortunately. So, getting back to what we wanna talk about. So what are the best choices you can make? Well, we're going to give two awards and we're going to give an honorable, me honorable mention. So first of all, let's look at best overall performance. If we want, if you want to cool your system, you can deal with a little bit higher noise, but still decent noise performance. I would say that for the best performance, the choice is really simple. The Gamax 400. You won't go wrong with this cooler. The only thing you have to know about it, and you can see what it looks like in the review, the fan that comes with it does have an LED, so it's either red or blue depending on the version you get. And unfortunately, if red or blue LEDs don't fit in your build, it could be a, a, a detraction. You know, this cooler could unfortunately be a bad choice for you in those cases. If you have a closed case or if the blue or red fits in your build, well, it'll be the perfect cooler for you. It has really good performance. The fan, when it's not spinning at 100%, is pretty silent. And even at 100, it is far from the worst cooler on our chart. It finished in the top five of the aftermarket coolers, making it overall for cooling performance. This is our best performer. However, if we want to talk about the best performance combining cooling and noise, I would definitely choose the Contact 12 from Thermaltake. Number one, you can either prioritize cooling or noise. Even if you want to a silent operation and prioritize noise, you hardly lose any performance from what we can see on the charts on the cooling side. Meaning that with or without the LNC, it's still in the top five coolers you can have under 30 bucks. And on top of it, the cooler does uh, come with the option for installing a second fan and push-pull, which we'll be looking at in a different video. So honestly, if I was building a Ryzen or Intel system today and I wanted to buy a cooler for my system, the Contact 12 would be my choice. The Gamax 400 would never, the Gamax 400 would never be a bad choice, but I personally would go with the Contact 12 just so that I can actually choose between performance or silence. And at the same time, uh, it's, you know, it's an unbeatable value in my opinion. Lastly, there's one last thing. We're gonna pop up the charts back, but this time a different cooler is gonna be highlighted. And it's bring, just to bring something to your attention if you haven't noticed. So it, the chart that's up there right now, as you see the Gamax 300 is highlighted. The reason why is because if you look at the charts, the only coolers beating out the, the Gamax 300 in uh, cooling performance are $30 coolers. And the Gamax 300 is actually tied with two other coolers that is at that $30 mark. Meaning that at 20 bucks, it's actually performing as strong as some of the $30 options out there. And you're actually not losing that much performance when you compare it to uh, the the only one that really I would say outperforms it by a huge margin is the Hyper 212 and the Gamax 400. And if you look at the noise, it's somewhere in the middle. The charts would be up there right now. So it's not the worst cooler out there, but there's very little difference separating it from most of the other most of the other coolers on the market that are stronger than it. Only I would say the thermal take uh, contact 12 with the LNC installed will clearly beat it noise wise. So the reason I'm bringing your attention to that is this is our honorable mention for this video. If you really want ultra budget and you want decent performance, the Gamax 300 can be a really good choice for you. The reason why is because you're getting pretty good cooling performance, pretty good noise performance, and you're paying under 20 bucks generally. Meaning that, uh, although I personally would go with the Contact 12 or the Gamax 400, for someone that wants to save the extra 10 bucks or that you have a, a CPU that doesn't generate that much heat, 
like my Ryzen 3, the Gamax 300 can do a perfect job and you can overclock all the way to as high as your CPU can go. I wouldn't recommend it for like a Ryzen 7 1700X, for example, or an i7, but for some of the lower coolers, the Gamax 300, you actually might not need to invest any more than that if all you're looking at is decent overclocking performance. So as usual, I'm going to leave the links to the top coolers in the description down below. So it's the Amazon and Newegg uh, links for Canada and the US. If you guys want to pick up one of these coolers, if you go through my link, it gives the channel a kickback, costs nothing extra for you, so that's really appreciated. Secondly, if you like this video, likes and, uh, likes and subscriptions are always really help out the channel a lot. My Patreon link is down there below as well if you want to help out the channel directly. And um, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to know about that wasn't clear, leave them in the comments down below. I try to answer everyone I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll at least try to let you know that I don't know the answer. And as usual, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.